Hey, how you doing? Flipped Geometry. It is time to jump into the next lecture. We're starting Chapter 2 today, and we're going to be beginning with uh, inductive reasoning. So this is a, just a foundational unit that is going to help you understand how the logic of geometry works. We're starting to get you ready for proofs, and uh, you need to be able to understand stepwise logic and how to think and argue a case. So that's the point of this unit. Let's go ahead and jump into it. There are two general ways of getting to a conclusion. Um, generally speaking, there is deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. First, inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the process of coming to a general conclusion by finding a pattern in several specific examples. This has been summarized as argument from the details to the general. So if you see individual examples that work, um, you can extrapolate upwards that there might be a general overarching principle that always applies. So, for example, inductive reasoning, if you had never driven a car before and uh, you've never seen a car before and you land here in Honolulu and you see a bunch of people getting into cars and driving down the road, you could generally infer that the way people in Honolulu got around was by watching was by getting into cars, right? And so you do that by say, by seeing several people do it and you're like, huh, this must be how it's done. Well, that is one way of arriving to a conclusion. Now you can see that that isn't always 100% true uh, proof that you're getting to because um, there might be other ways of getting around. You know, some people take scooters, some people ride bikes, some people take the bus, some people take a cab. Some people on other parts of the island might even ride horses. But um, you're, if you're, you see several examples that work, then you think, okay, generally, this may be true. Okay, that's inductive reasoning. So let's make a conjecture about a pattern. Conjecture is just a word that means a conclusion arrived at through inductive reasoning. So let's use inductive reasoning to describe the pattern in each series of examples, then find the next two items in each series. So if classes begin at 8.55 and then 9.05 and then 9.55, uh, from 8.15 to 9.05 is a 50-minute gap, and then so 8.15, 9.05, 9.55, that's a 50-minute gap. The next two would be 10.45 and 11.35. Okay, uh, that's an example of inductive reasoning. Here's another example of inductive reasoning. I have uh, a a uh, item that is just one dot, and then I put two, another row of two, then I put another row of three, and then a row of four. What's the next two? Row of five and a row of six, right? So my next two numbers would be 15 and then 21. So these are just examples of inductive reasoning. You have a couple of examples, you infer a pattern, you predict what happens next. All right, let's move on. So inductive reasoning works as long as your examples are good and there aren't um, lots of counterexamples out there, but we generally prefer deductive reasoning in math to inductive reasoning. Inductive, again, works from the details up to the generals, and deductive, the opposite of that, goes from the generals and then down to specific examples. So um, the, the inductive reasoning, again, works as long as there aren't lots of things that don't fit the pattern. So the presence of a pattern does not necessarily imply proof. It means that in this particular example, with these particular samples, it works but we would rather have generally reliable statements. And so we're going to move on to deductive reasoning and show you how that functions. Before we do, though, let's look at a, an example of a counter example. So inductive reasoning breaks down if the pattern finds an exception or if there is something that disproves your general argument. So here's a counter example. example. Um, after examining the listed products, Jennifer concludes that every multiple of three is odd give a counter example to show that this conjecture is false. So if she just were to have the sample of three times three is nine, three times nine is 27, three times 27 is 81, and her sampling were inaccurate. She happened to not grab any of the numbers that were three times in uh, a number that would give an even uh, product, then she would have a false sense of what the logic means. So here's just a, a counter example, three times two is six. And so if she had had this in her sample, she would have come to a different conclusion. Counterexamples are ways of disproving an inductive argument. And so you can see that inductive reasoning by itself is not proof. Inductive reasoning is a reason to, um, is evidence towards something, but is not actually the proof itself that you have come to an accurate conclusion. 
Um, the presence of a pattern in several instances does not guarantee that the pattern continues. Generally speaking, patterns are reliable, but the pattern is only as good as the sample that you've arrived at, right? So today in class, you're going to be using inductive reasoning um, and then finding counterexamples and demonstrating to yourself that inductive reasoning is not proof, it's evidence. So we're going to do that in class a bunch. If uh, you have any questions, I will see you tomorrow and we'll go through this together. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you and so do I.